Well, uh, <clears throat> you know, Hindustan Zinc and Vedanta shares are surging. Uh, so Vedanta, uh, Hindustan Zinc uh, earlier approved a corporate restructuring to unlock share, shareholder value. Uh, this is, of course, all, and there were reports earlier that Vedanta perhaps will do something similar as well for its, uh, you know, four or five businesses. But we are to hear on Vedanta. Vivek is here with more on this story. Vivek. Well, that's right. So both uh, Vedanta as well as Hindustan Zinc today are in focus. Both of the stocks are doing quite well in the session. Now, the reason for that is that uh, Hindustan Zinc has given an announcement to the exchanges where they've said that they have appointed a committee of directors to evaluate corporate restructuring. And the company is looking to go ahead and create separate entities for the zinc business, the lead business, the silver, as well as the recycling business. They will also appoint external advisors to evaluate restructuring. How does this impact Vedanta? Remember, Vedanta holds nearly 65% stake as far as Hindustan Zinc is concerned. It's also important to note that the government also holds a significant stake and all of the decisions that you know the management does take will actually require the shareholder approval as well as the government approval. Now, you know, this comes in context given the fact on September 26th, uh, Vedanta, you know, having significant uh, cash flow mismatch problems in terms of actually having to repay its debt, did see a ratings downgrade coming in for the parent entity, that is Vedanta Resources. So Moody's downgraded the corporate rating of Vedanta Resources on September 26th. Uh, Moody's has said that the downgrade reflects the elevated risk of debt restructuring over the next few months. Uh, now, along with that, you know, yesterday, a whole host of reports, uh, we also reached out to the management. We are yet to receive a response from them. But reports have indicated that similar to what Hindustan Zinc has done, Vedanta too is looking to demerge all of the separate businesses that it has into separate entities so that they could go ahead and unlock value. Um, now, this move is part of the broader restructuring plan that the entire group is doing. Now, why is all of this important? Remember, Vedanta has significant debt issues. So, Vedanta resources, uh, according to City, can meet all of the debt restructuring or debt repayment obligations that it has for FY24. But the problem arises in terms of the company having the cash flow to go ahead and actually meet its FY25 debt obligations. They're saying the pure dividend upstreaming from Hindustan Zinc, Vedanta earnings, as well as brand free at this point of time will actually be inadequate to meet the FY25 obligations. What is the quantum of debt? Uh, the repayments and interest due in FY25 are close to $4 billion. Mm, okay. okay. Uh, got that, uh, Vivek. Thanks very much uh, for that. So FI24, perhaps, yes, but FI25 is the problem. Uh, uh, Rahul Jain is uh, joining us uh, uh, now. He tracks the metal space closely. We also have Prakash Divan joining in. Uh, gentlemen, good to have both of you here. Uh, <clears throat> Rahul, uh, let, me, let me come to you. So as Vivek said, there is Hidusan Zinc, of course, which has been announced. There is Vedanta, which perhaps is expected to do something similar you know, the various uh, aluminum and uh, oil and other businesses, which it merged at one point years ago, uh, it perhaps will uh, sort of again demerge. But does it solve... Because, but all of this will take time, right? There are regulatory approvals, shareholder approvals, all of this. Uh, does yeah. it so solve for the near-term liquidity challenges? How should one look at this? If Vedanta were also to do it, let's assume, along with Hindustan Zing, Vedanta is also doing this. So first, I'll start with Hindustan Zing. So, for example, to break up uh, is quite difficult because a lot of these businesses are interlinked. Uh, the silver production is through largely through the lead uh, lead production. So it looks very difficult, uh, you know, as to how you can separate these businesses. And uh, the balance sheet on Hindustan Zing is really not a problem. Uh, there is uh, debt and there's equal amount of cash, and they're generating a decent amount of cash because uh, it's largely integrated operation. Uh, now coming to Vedanta, there over there, uh, the uh, debt has gone up over the last several quarters, largely because of the very high dividend payments. Now, uh, the dividend payout uh, has been compulsion is obviously the debt repayment obligation which the parent has. And uh, so, th although they have been saying that a lot of these issues are temporary and, you know, things will get resolved, but obviously... Uh, there is a concern in the market that, uh, you know, these things can take time to play out. So that, those uh, issues are there. Uh, now, uh, obviously, uh, this step which they have announced for Hindustan Zing uh, doesn't seem to be that, uh, you know, uh, it can be implemented in a hurry. A uh, key issue also is the government holds a significant stake in that company. And uh, the first step ideally should be to, you know, get the government out, uh, you know, by through whatever acquisition, through the acquisition. And then you can, you know, uh, pursue the other plans which they already had, for example, to merge the South African uh, Zinc operations with Hindustan Zinc. I think that would be a better thing to work uh, rather than to separate Hindustan Zinc initially. Rahul, markets price uh, future events uh, today, right? 
uh, we have to find the net present value of a future event. Um, so already the stocks have reacted positively, but what would you ascribe the uh, increased valuation on the back of this corporate restructuring for Hindustan Zing and even for Vedanta? Uh, Hindustan Zinc kind of has actually stagnated as a company. If you see uh, the production growth has been quite muted over the last few years. Uh, another big challenge for the company is that uh, they are not investing a lot into the mining operations because they have a deadline of 2030 for when the mines go back to auction again. So obviously you don't take a very large uh, investment risk when you, know, you are not really sure whether you have a mine life beyond that uh, 2030. Obviously there will be prime contenders to get it. And for the, uh, the Vedanta businesses, see Vedanta is an agglomeration of several businesses, uh, uh, largely zinc and aluminum and some amount of uh, copper, copper, copper as well as crude oil. So these two, these three, four are the key segments. Now what has happened is the debt going up, you definitely increase the riskiness. So obviously there is a section of investors who don't want to play such a high risk play. Uh, but if you look at the uh, overall uh, commodities play, so we, I, I particularly think that there is a, uh, commodity super cycle due over the next several years because uh, so in that case uh, Vedanta is a very strong contender in that segment and the aluminium piece has done really well over the years and that uh, if you if they at all they are able to succeed if they're successful in uh, you know going ahead with team merger plan the aluminium piece will be very interesting to look at uh, they have got several large coal mines coming into uh, you know operation they will be fully integrated sure. on that. So I think, uh, see, uh, market reactions are short-term, very difficult to predict which way to go. But as a company, they are a cost leader and uh, their balance sheet issues appear to be temporary. Okay. Uh, Prakash Divan, uh, I wanted your thoughts on this because, you know, the problem with Vedanta for a very long time has been the escalating debt, right? I mean, as we speak as well, I think the debt that Vedanta is sitting on, gross debt, is almost six and a half billion dollars. And we've seen that play out in the stock as well. I mean, the stock has sort of fallen off a cliff in the last six months. It's down almost 20 percent. Uh, as and when this corporate restructuring fructifies, what should Vedanta shareholders do? Uh, so, yeah, so, yeah, very valid question because we've seen the stock also have some sort of a silver lining given the fact that uh, Vedanta was shoring up its own resources and, and the Indian business actually threw up a lot of cash as dividend. The people have enjoyed that, uh, you know, those one and a half, two years of a phase. But now is the time where, you know, it's, it's trial by fire. And uh, whatever restructuring that they undertake is, is right now going to be more of, you know, an indicative uh, trend of what's likely to come in terms of unlocking value. I mean, these are all companies like Sterling, Copper, Kane, Sets are going, all of them coming together now, you're demerging these businesses. So there could be some un value unlocking, but I'm not too sure whether whether that's going to be so exciting. Those of that demerger to come through maybe later in the day. Uh, essentially, what shareholders should do, they, you know, if you have to play commodities, it's definitely a very good bet. Uh, I think it's too big to fail in some of the, most of the businesses that they are in. Uh, and, and commodities is, in a, as Raul very rightly said, in a super cycle, which could probably be very secular and long term. So they will find a way out of this FI25 mess, which seems to be a bigger challenge than FI24 repayments. Uh, so there could be some respite. But yeah, it's it's a mercurial stock. It hasn't been very consistent, so not for the faint-hearted. Uh, and then it's best to kind of take tactical move, uh, you know, plays out there, not, not something very long-term. One has the stock and is sitting on losses. My question is uh, not for fresh purchases. If someone's sitting on losses, should you book out now or should you just keep the faith? No, so for that's important, Sonia, that if you have it and you're not getting your value, you will have to definitely wait. For the simple reason, there could be, if there is a possibility of improvement, it's on the way up uh, because they will want to do things which uh, which create value so that they can benefit. The, the parent company with, with other resources has to get bailed out. So that will not happen if uh, this business kind of suffers. So I'm, I'm sure there's some sort of a linearity to the improvement that can happen and people could probably start seeing some value getting created in the near term as well. <clears throat> Rahul, uh, so uh, what, would, what, what would your kind of advice in that sense be? Uh, would, you, would you be a buyer? Because the underlying businesses are all doing well because uh, commodity prices are, are, are doing are, are well and they're projected to do well. It's a, it's a very profitable uh, business. The pro problem is that the promoter entity, uh, not with Vedanta Limited itself, but it's a problem nevertheless, and that depresses the price here. Uh, it should not be trading where it is. Had it not been for the debt problems at resources level. Uh, so like, for, uh, uh, 
rightly said that dividends have been like fantastic over the last two years. Obviously, that won't continue in the near future, given the debt which has gone up significantly. Uh, so you should look at it this way: like uh, you have businesses which are world class, which are uh, delivering a decent amount of growth. Obviously, there is a volatility of the commodity price. So we had a huge uh, sharp jump in last year, especially after the Russia issue. Uh, that has now subsided, and commodity prices are at the normalized levels. And uh, there is also a huge, uh, you know, the underlying currency benefits. There is a huge integration which is happening. So, on terms of earnings, I don't see a lot of disappointment. It's largely coming from the balance sheet side, and uh, that, like if there is uh, concern what will happen next year, debt repayment. But they have somehow managed over the last several years, and I think they will definitely manage going forward. So, for obviously, there is a high volatility in the stock, but it's a definitely a very uh, long play, you know, in terms of the quality of assets. So, it's a very long run play uh, on the domestic India play in a way, you can look at it that way. Hmm. Uh, but will it make money? Will the share make money from here? That's the that's the. I mean, the price is still uh, price. Vedanta share price is where it was in two thousand two thousand nine. Uh, lots of swings so I, I, in between. Yeah. So you see, these commodities uh, typically you you look at them on EV, EBITDA kind of a multiple basis. So mm -hmm. of late, because the cash drain, the EBITDA has suddenly uh, not got impacted. It's the EV which is mixed, which has changed. And mm -hmm. uh, over time, as you generate more cash, the the debt comes down, you will see an equity return coming back. So, with uh, and plus they've had setbacks, you know, in the past with respect to, uh, you know, the cane not performing as expected, and then coal mines also uh, not getting a lot, the uh, alumina mines also, uh, for bauxite not getting a lot. Now, all those things are falling in place now. So, obviously, at uh, such stressful times, you get the stock cheap, but you definitely you'll have to go through the uncertainties with respect to debt. And now, as you, uh, as if they're able to sell, I mean, one of the key uh, proposals which could be to get rid of some of the non-core business, especially the steel side or uh, some of the businesses. Oh, okay. I think. Okay, I think we lost the line there. We lost the line there. Yeah, we did. Uh, but I think we got the gist of what you guys are saying. Uh, <clears throat> Rahul, great speaking with you. Thank you very much for joining us. And uh, Prakash, as always, it's a pleasure having you with us with that uh, perspective uh, coming through. Uh, you know, we'll take a quick...